That's Hello, nice. everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm going to start uh, soon uh, to light the Hanukkiah. Hanukkiah is a very new word. Uh, the, the way to say it is actually the menorah, because it is a menorah, but we say Hanukkiah because of Hanukkah. Um, uh, but before that, could we share the picture that I sent you, Michelle? You know what? Um, give me a second, because I'm not on my computer, because I'm at my sister's house, and I oh, yeah. didn't bring okay. this computer. But no, no, if you actually, if you give me a second, I can pull it up. One second. All right, so in the meantime, I'll, I'll tell you. So uh, there is something that is called a Jerusalem Hanukkiah. I couldn't find anything in English when I put it in the Google search. But actually, this is what you see. This is the origin of Hanukkiah. Hanukkiahs in the old days, and you can see them actually, the only place I think is in Jerusalem, and mainly in Mea Sharim, which is the ultra-orthodox place. And this Hanukkiah is actually a box that is made from metal, and in order to protect from uh, rain and yeah, the wind. And inside, they put glasses uh, filled with oil. So there is no structure actually to it. They just put the, the, oh. the, the, the glasses and one that is oh. a little bit elevated. And this is uh, what they use. And they put it outside. So it's uh, actually a fixture outside of the house or uh, something that you hang. And then they leave it on uh, for the eight days. And of course, they oh. leave it at night. Are we ready to leave the Hanukiadas? Yes. Okay, so what we do, we do this, and we're going to switch the camera like that. Oh, you want to light the Hanukkiah, Das? Mm. Okay, so I'll control the camera. Oh, bring it over here. Yeah, and anyone uh, that is not muted, uh, unless you want to say something uh, important or... Ira, you should see his, his menorah. Ira? Ira? Okay, wait one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and mute. Let me Come just over get on here. there. Okay. Quick, so, really? we have yes. those, uh, this beautiful Hanukkah that I got from Israel uh, many years ago. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kideshanu bemitzvotav, Vetsibanu lehadikmer shel hanu. Then everyone say Amen. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Sheasani Shim El Avoteinu, Bayamim Alem Bazman Ehaseh. And everyone Amen. Now obviously I did it the wrong way. The right way is actually to eat the shamash, and with the shamash, that's the purpose of the shamash, you leave the other candles, but because it comes in a small uh, glass thing and to hold it, I'm a little bit afraid, then I am doing a little cheat here. And we are ready to cook a little bit. So again, greeting everyone and uh, happy Hanukkah. You all know the term Yontef. With Yontef we say many, many times, during the, the, the holidays, one to another on Rosh Hashanah, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. But we are not saying Yonte, good Yonte for Hanukkah, because actually this is not like a solid or a, a big holiday. It, it's not mentioned in the Torah at all. It happens many, many years later. And if we have time, I will explain later how it's actually almost not mentioned at all uh, in the Mishnah in, at all, and in the Talmud, very, very little. Uh, so we just say happy Hanukkah. So we are going to do a few things, and each one of those Hadas chose very, very carefully. As you know, she is the master of all of this, and I am the puppet, the puppet, and she is the puppet here. Uh, first, we are going to do a zucchini cupcake. So originally, this is done as a quiche. Uh, however, you can make it, put it in small uh, cupcakes, and then it's an individual serve. And there is nothing more simple than that. What we do, we take the zucchini, five zucchinis, and I need to uh, make them, uh, how do you call this? Grind. Grind them, but it's not exactly grind, it's like on this thing. It's if you have an attachment or if you have a device, 
this is the thing. So you can I actually grade it. I think grated, the word is grated, grated. Yeah. So I put it here. Uh, that's the trickiest part I know. Yeah, I got it right. We take this thing out and then we turn it on. And if we connect it to the <laughs> power, it actually works. To tell you a story about it. There was, no, I won't. They don't fit. So, so you can cut them to I'm going to cut them into the sections. Like that. And then I can put them easily. And we put it like that, we can like that. I have a device that helps you push them. And we put them all. We want them braided wet. I'll take a bigger knife for that task. Careful with my fingers. Cut it into two. And another one. And we do need to braid them. Maybe I should have done it earlier, but it's going to go quick. Put that in. Like that. Yeah. So the best way is to just cut them, put them in mm -hmm. like that, and they will be ready eventually. Only another two. And like you're that. cooking them. Ah, uh -huh. that's what you you're using also the chive for the next one. The what? The chive. Yes. The chives, yes, I know, I know, I know. I'm making a mess with the chives. The chives is for, is for actually the sauce that we are going to make. So this pie, the first time that I ate this pie, this uh, fish was at Hadassah's uh, parents' house. Uh, her mother made it. And I was very not excited about it because until that point, I didn't like zucchini. For some reason, and maybe because my father didn't like zucchini, I didn't know that zucchini is actually a very good friend. Zucchini does whatever you tell it to do. So zucchini can be sweet, zucchini can be sour. Uh, there is a great uh, a zucchini cake that actually tastes pretty really delicious. Zucchini is almost invisible and have very, very little mild taste. And because of that, we can do a lot of things with it. So what we want to do, we want to take, there is some, uh, a little bit, juices in some zucchinis that depend on the zucchinis. So some have more and some have less. So this one actually is a pretty dry zucchini. So that's good. And we drain it like that. And that is fine. And this is as easy as can be. So I didn't like zucchinis. And she made the zucchini and me and Agas were just starting out and I didn't want to insult anyone. So uh, I tried it. And actually, I really loved it. I was looking forward every time when we go to our house to, uh, to eat this zucchini pie. It's very, very good. Not pie, quiche. So what we do, now we are going to mix all the ingredients together. Because there is nothing easier. That's up. Yeah, I forgot something. The onion. So we have the onion. Now look how much liquid is in with the zucchinis already. So I forgot to do the onions. So we put this, the onion is going to be much easier. I'm going to take the blade for it. Um, the blade is, is over there. It's over there. Yeah, but you can also use this part. This think. one, but that will be much smaller. Okay. Okay. There you go. And you need the other cover also. Yeah. No, this is fine. This you side. just yeah, need so the, other like cover, the other cover. Just the other cover. The other cover. So this, I don't think there is an easier thing to do than this pie. We just put the onions, we have the onions, throw them in like that. And we heat it until it becomes puree actually. And this will actually add a lot of uh, juices also. So we close it. Stop. 
so easy compared to doing it by hand. We jump it from time to time. That's it. So as I said, there are two ways to do it. The traditional way that this is made is actually as, as a one big quiche, and you can do that. But if you do that, you will need to, you need to uh, bake it for much longer because of all, all the liquids that need to set. But because of all those liquids, because of all those liquids, actually, uh, this is a very juicy, very juicy quiche uh, uh, or cupcakes. So I ate those here. Yeah, use a, a spatula. This is a good spatula for this. So, and I'm adding it here. That's it. As simple as can be. There is nothing more simple than that. You just take it like that. And you mix it a little bit. And then, you know, we need to hold it together. If you put it like this, obviously the whole thing will break up. So what we, 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 the things that combine and make things hom homogeneous, maybe this is the word, are eggs because of the proteins. So I'm going to add three eggs. And what is the amount that we said? We did like, uh, how many zucchinis there? Were there four big zucchinis in mm -hmm. Four big zucchinis. And and, uh, and and the three eggs. And this is going to be part of the binding agent. You really need a lot of binding agent here because look at this, this is going to break the whole thing apart if there will not be enough bi uh, binding things. So I may add another egg. If you're not sure if it will hold or not, remember an egg is a miracle thing. And if you don't need, if you don't want the fat, actually the part that holds the things together is the uh, protein. So you can just put the white. To that, I'm going no, to no, add this. this and, the and oil. So first the oil. And for this amount, we have thir uh, three, four, three fourths of a cup of oil that we add, which obviously you need. Now remember, when you hear the three quarters cup of, of oil, you may freak out, wow, that's a lot of oil, but actually, we measure it by, uh, by the, per weight. So this is like a very big thing. So uh, at, at the end, this is not going to be something with high percentage of fat in it because it's very big and you need the oil. And then we, we add the flour. And how much flour we have here with this, Adas? A cup and a half. Cup and a half of, of the flour. Now, this is not an it's exact self, science. Self-rising flour. Self-rising flour. And this is not an exact science. You're going to see how it looks at the end. And based on that, I will decide if I want to add another, another egg or a little bit more flour. But remember, the less flour you will have in this, the juicier and more succulent it will be. The easiest thing is to add more and more flour to anything you do, cake or cookie. But the flour is actually the thing that makes it dry. You want it to look as soft as possible. Now, because I'm not 100% sure if it will hold together, I'm going to add another egg. You say no? No, no, because it's, it, it, it needs to be soft. I know, I know. But no, it, it, yeah, many, of... many it's okay. Okay. <laughs> you see? Yeah. If I want to live long and happy <laughs> it's and okay. be happy. <laughs> and I'm not arguing. So that's what it is. However, we always need to add salt and we always need to add the uh, uh, pepper. So uh, let's see if we can take the big one and I'll tell you how much salt I will put. Where is the salt that is? In the, so take the... The kosher, kosher salt is even better. But it's almost empty. No, it's fine for, okay. this, for this amount. So I would say for an amount like that, what you see here, and I don't want to make it too strong and salty. I will put one teaspoon. I will add one teaspoon. There you go. We add one teaspoon. And I'm going to add another half a teaspoon. And remember, and you, you all know, you can always add salt. But if something is too salty, it's a problem. So for an amount like this, a, a teaspoon and a half is not something that is going to make you feel too salty. 
And if it's not too salty, you can always add. Now, if you see this, this is the mixture. You see how the mixture has like the big grains, pieces of the grated the zucchini? Pepper. pepper. Okay, so we add pepper. I would say to something like this, depending how uh, spicy you want it, I would say between half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of uh, pepper. Or yeah. you can use the big one. And you can use the big one. Well, you, know what? you know what, let's get to the big one. We like so. Yeah, we like to, we like no, no. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, so we like it peppery. Uh, and I'm going mean, to take uh, peppery. This looks like a pepper. Uh, this is uh, other, other side, man. The other side, the other side, here it is. Here is the pepper. So I'm going to be more generous because we do like pep uh, uh, peppery, but not too much. So that's enough. And this thing I mix together. So what I can do, I can just put it in the oven, put it in a, in a, in a, a, a not the tovnit. Tray. A tray mm -hmm. and, and just, or a Pyrex and let it bake. But instead I'm going to put the a small mini muffin. So, so this is going so to stick. The cupcakes. Uh, ah, we have the cupcakes. So we, we yeah, want to put it in the cupcakes, but we yeah, don't want it to stick for sure. So I'm going to spray it a little bit. That's you can talk even loud because they are hearing you. If I hear you, they hear you for sure. Okay. Even if you whisper. Wait, so I'm not going to do many of them. That's going to go to do maybe just to see if it works. So five, six, seven, eight, something like that. And we'll put them in and see how it goes. And we will see as we go if it uh, if it dries or not. The way to check it is to actually, like you know. We stick a, 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 a toothpick, and the toothpick will tell us if it's still wet or not. I think this is enough. We can always make more later. And I'm going to fill them up like this. First, I'm going to spray them. No matter how much we think we prepared everything, we, miss, we don't have a spray. Do we? No, we don't. We don't. Yeah, but we don't need to spray them. Okay. I don't think so. We won't spray. And and this is going a... to stick to it, but. But it's fine. You just. Uh... Yeah. You just scrape it off when yeah. you okay. So this is how you do it. You put it like that. Yeah, not all the way because it's no, because it's self right Yeah. So we put it like that. We put one. We put the second one. And again, you can either do it like this, or you can do it uh, the other way and just put it and cut it to cubes. And this is really the easiest. This is considered to be, I think, healthy food because it's vegetables and it's it. This thing is very very succulent. You see? And if you want to do it really the way that uh, you want to use, don't, don't, be, uh, don't skimp on the oil because the oil actually is the agent that makes it uh, actually <laughs> tastier. And remember, if you divide the three uh, quarters of a cup oil in this whole thing amount, then you have something that I think no more than 5% fit, maybe a little bit more, which is little. Maybe 10%, 8%. Wait, okay, so this is how it looks. And we throw it to the oven. So uh, the, the recipe says 50 minutes to, if we put the whole thing in a big one that is, takes much longer. But if we use small ones, then it should be quicker and we want it to be ready when we are done. So 350 and it's here. Canter, uh, canter. Yes. If it's if it's a casserole dish, not individuals, how long? So then longer. So then if this, I, I don't know how long it will take for this to be ready. I think like 20 minutes uh, or so, I'll check it. 20 minutes timer. I will check it in 20 minutes. Uh, but if you use uh, the big one, probably 50 minutes. Yeah, so um, any other questions about this? So usually I go with the second dish and then I go with the dessert. However, because I, I really am trying to get everything ready in one hour or so, uh, this, the cake need to go to the oven. The other thing doesn't go to the oven. 
So first of all, this is an, an amazing cake. The amazing thing about this cake is that is you, you, you get the cake and then from the inside, you know, they call it a lava cake because you don't finish baking it all the way through. And then the end, when you, the outside is ready, but when you, you, you take a piece out, the whole thing comes out and this will be better than any chocolate that you ate in any restaurant, I think. Of course, I don't know, but this is what I think. So I'm going to put in the microwave and melt uh, the butter, the sugar, I better take out the scallion, <laughs> and the chocolate. All of this I'm taking and I'm putting in the microwave and I want to melt. So I put it in five minutes at last, maybe? No, not maybe three. Three minutes. I'm going to go ahead and... Okay. I hope you can see me well until the dust comes. So normally when I melt chocolate in the microwave, usually I don't, I temper chocolate, but if you need a quick to melt chocolate, you can do it on a Ben Marie, meaning on a, on a steam bath on the stove, or you can do it in the microwave. However, when you melt chocolate in the microwave, do not melt it in a glass container like I did. But there is an excuse for that because this is not only chocolate that I'm melting, I'm melting there the butter, and I'm melting the, the other stuff. But when you melt chocolate uh, and you want to use it for something else, when you use glass, the glass gets really, really hot and then actually it can scorch the, the chocolate. So even the chocolate will not be completely melted, but the glass will be extremely hot. You don't want that. Therefore, I suggest when you melt the chocolate, use a plastic container. Adas, can you hold the camera? I'm dying with my angle. Oh, yeah, 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 just, uh, I just... So Adas is uh, just lubricating, the, yeah, she greased this, yes, the, okay. Okay. okay, so this is what we have. The, here is where we're going to do the cake. I'm going to take a quick look to see what happens. Yeah. And maybe you want to take a spatula and then... Yeah, I'll get to it in a second. So this is, a, again, a very, 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 very easy cake to do. And the thing that makes it so delicious, like in everything, cooking and baking, is the ingredients. So me growing up, a cake would be made with one egg and a lot of baking, baking and soda. This is the way that I grew up. Any, anyone made cakes like that because eggs were very expensive. Uh, these days, eggs are not expensive, so you can put more eggs. So the more eggs, the better it is. So uh, we are going to use five eggs for this thing. And I'm going to break them here in the meantime and tell you a quick story in the meantime if I haven't said that story before. It's a story that I heard about my father. So my father was born in 1920 and in those days everyone was very poor. He had seven siblings and his parents were poor and food was, was scarce and expensive. What, uh, forget about butter. But eggs, you put there, they were expensive. My father was told, I was told, he loved eggs so much that he would eat them raw. He really loved them the most raw. And what he was caught once doing, and actually showed me that he's doing it himself. He would uh, uh, see where the eggs are. He would make a puncture with the needle. And then he would suck the whole egg and put it back. So when everything looks like no egg is missing, by the time it was found, maybe, even though I think everybody knew that it was him. But later on, when I grew up and I told him that I heard that story, he took an egg really and he punctured it and stuck the whole thing. All right, let's see. So you see now the glass is really, really hot. But let's see, let's do the special thing a little bit and see how it works. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's see what happens here. You see, it started to melt. We don't want it very hot. And the reason that we don't want it very hot is because then when we add the eggs, we don't want when we add the eggs that this thing will be too hot because then we'll get an omelet. So we want it melted, but not very hot. And in order to know the temperature, I'm going to bring my gadget. 
this gadget is going to tell me that the temperature here now is 150 degrees. So this is a little bit over what it takes to make an egg uh, uh, ready, 160. But if we will add it slowly, it will be fine. So I'm going to take a, uh, this thing and I'm going to start adding the mix. So actually I'm going to break it a little bit with the very one. I'm going to mix it and then slowly, slowly I'm going to add. We don't have to. And we want to do it slowly. We don't want it to curdle. That's the word. Curdle. We don't want it to be curdled. So we do this. And as we spin it, we slowly, slowly add the egg. The eggs will cool the whole thing. And the eggs bring all the good consistency that we want. So remember, there are very, very good ingredients in this cake and it's really incredibly delicious. Never, ever, ever get, yeah, one second. Pardon. <laughs> It's okay. Let's see if the lens is clean. Yeah. Okay. So, never ever buy mix mixes to make cakes because they are the worst. It's very easy to make it yourself, and there is nothing that compares to this. So once we have that, we want to add the flour, and there is not a lot of flour. Look how much flour you have for this amount of cake. It shows you the flour is really overrated when you make cakes. And by the way. I think that one of my favorite cakes are, is a cake for Hessa that doesn't have flour at all. So we want to add this. Again, slowly, as much as we can. And that's it. So we add it, we mix it. And actually, this thing you can eat as it is. You don't need even to bake it. It will be very delicious. You may die. From the summer, summer, yeah. but at least you will die with a smile because now, like other things, they are better before they are cooked or baked. This is really delicious as it is, and this is ready. And once we have that, we just want to add it to the pan. Put this in here, like that. And then I'm going to put the whole thing here, like that. And we add that. Uh, see, that's it. Now, when my mother used to make uh, cakes, I used to wait patiently and sometimes not so patiently just to lick whatever is left. And what I was licking was nothing close to this because as I said, it didn't have a lot of eggs, not a lot of chocolate. Not but a lot of baking soda. <laughs> Baking uh, as, uh, as soda. Yeah, baking soda. Yeah, let me wash my hands. And this is ready. Now, uh, the, the, personally, you, if you can see this cake, it is very shallow. Because it is shallow, the effect of the lava will not be as apparent as. Uh, with a higher cake. So I would say for a amount like this, if you use a smaller uh, plate, then it will, you'll have more. However, this thing rises. So let's see how much it rises. So I'm going to put it in the lower oven. Um, yeah, but the lower oven is, so, is not accurate at all, so. Ah, but would you, would you put the zucchini and this in the same oven? Mm, with I the know. onions? Maybe it will work. I mean, I ne we never uh, put together <laughs> something sweet and something no, not sweet. Yeah, but it's, it doesn't bake. It doesn't bake well? Well, no. We'll see what happens. I think it will be fun. This is not a very high end. This, this is a very, very, very simple cake. I mean, you cannot go, I think you cannot go wrong. It may not be perfectly done on all sides, but it's, yeah, it's still yeah. delicious. Uh, this goes to the side, you're done. And now uh, we have this. These potato latkes, let me tell you something about them. This is just the, the sweet potato. 
there is a restaurant, there was a restaurant in, uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, Ella and... Orna and Ella, Orna and Ella, Orna, two, two even, yeah, Orna, two chefs. People were waiting in line to get inside this restaurant, and one of their signature dish was this latke that they served all year, it's not the Hanukkah latke. Everybody loved it, and eventually they released the recipe one to one, so anyone can enjoy it. So this is really, really very, very good. Uh, just a minute, there is a question. Question. What, what Did, yeah, the, there's a question. Oh, you got it. Okay, good. 350. 350 degrees for the oven. Now this, I need to crash it, so I need a crasher. Uh, here. No, no, here. There, there. Oh, it's there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so first I'm going to crush them. So what, what I had to, usually I don't like to prepare things ahead of time and everything I make as I make it, but these uh, uh, sweet potatoes need to be crushed ahead of time. Uh, not a, 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 a boiled for a while because you want them to get softened and to absorb all the, the water. So it's now it's very, very soft and this is the way you want to do it. As a general rule of thumb, you don't want to overwork this mixture and the, and the sweet potatoes. And the reason for that is that the starch will be activated even more. And then you can end up with something too sticky that you will not be able to work with and will not be as tasty. So I think this is fine. Mm, great. Now, once we have that, and we need the red, this spatula. I'm going to use this one again. Once again, we just add the mixture. So what do we have here? This is going to go for later. First, we will add the flour. So I'm going to uh, uh, gently add the flour. And I'll tell you this, you want to spread it evenly so it's easier to mix later. I will even do that. I put half of it. I'm going to fold it a little bit. But again, I don't want to scare you off. It will work even if you don't do that. But I'm just very meticulous. So, and then I add the second half. Now, as you can see this, there are not too many ingredients in it. It's only sweet potatoes. Okay, now what else do we need to add? We need to add the salt and the pepper. So we have here a salt. We didn't have a regular uh, salt, so we use Himalayan. If you use Himalayan salt, you have to use a little bit more because it's not as salty. Uh, and there was for, I did one kilo. And for one kilo, we put like, what was it? One spoon? Of, uh, soy sauce. of of okay one one spoon of uh, one tablespoon of soy sauce, which is going to be add a little bit of flavor and saltiness, and we add the salt and the the pepper, and that's it. What we want to do now, we just want to mix it. Kind of feel a little bit dry. Kind of feels a little bit dry. So I'm going, this is going to be dry a little bit. I'm going to add one egg. Yep. I'm going to add another egg, one egg. Now, and that's made the face when I, added, when I said I'm going to add an egg. And the reason is it's not in the recipe, but whatever it is, this recipe was for a larger amount. And to me, this, this thing, even though it will work, but it will be a little bit uh, choky, I think. It will choke us. So even though we eat it with the sauce, but one egg, believe me, is not going to change alter the taste whatsoever. And it will add some uh, actually fat and a little bit of the uh, uh, bonding agent, even though this, there is enough of bonding in this. Now, I have a little bit of problem uh, mixing it the way I want to. I'm going to get dirty and I'm going to do it with a glove. And when I have a glove, 
I can really feel it. Now, as I said before, you don't want to overdo it because then it will be very starchy and we don't want that. So I'm going to mix it very gently. You see, I fold it like this, like that. Very gently, I want to work with that. And now I feel that it's soft. One egg changed the whole thing. One egg changed the whole thing. Okay, so this is ready. And this is very healthy. As I said, you have here potatoes. So unlike the regular latkes that we have grated potatoes, this is something very, very different. Very, very different. And that's it. Now, the good thing about these gloves is that you can just take it out and throw it to the garbage. Now, there are two ways to do it. The very healthy way and a little bit less tasty, which in the oven. So we can do it in the oven. Uh, or we can do it traditionally on the skillet and uh, frying it in, uh, in a little bit of oil. Either way you choose, the way to do it actually, you need to put it into a, a piping bag, but you don't need to get a piping bag. You can just use a ziplock, a large ziplock, put it inside and then with the scissor cut the end and this is fun. So I'm going to, yeah, first I'll put some uh, olive oil. So the tradition is obviously to use olive oil. So I'm going to use some olive oil. Little bit of olive oil, little bit more. And put it here and turn it on. Uh, light, surface light, that's it. So as it goes there, I'm going to fill this. Inside here. Pipe it like that. And I'm going to put it like this. And we'll have some time to talk as the things are cooking. And I'll tell you a few things about Hanukkah that you may not know, maybe. So here is the piping bag. You cut it like this at the end. Cut it. And then we're going to put it in once it's hot enough. So let's see how it is. So now the temperature is 152, so there is no chance. This is ready, so we have to wait a little bit. And as we wait for this, uh, I'll tell you a few things about Hanukkah. So we all know about the Maccabin. This is the story how the Maccabin fought in the Holy Temple and uh, uh, beat the, the Greeks. Uh, everything came, we say Maccabin because of Judah, the Maccabin. Judas, there is even a, a, an opera, Judas Maccabeus. He was the Maccabin. But he was the only one, actually, that was a Maccabee. Those people who fought, those uh, uh, mini army, were actually Hesmonians. And Hesmonians, uh, Hashmonaim in Hebrew, I have to find out it says in English. And they were called Hesmonians because they came from an area in Israel, in the north, that called uh, Hesmon, and Hesmon, for that matter. And those were called Hesmonites. And the, there was a man there, Matityahu. He had five boys. One of them was Yuda. Yuda, his son, he got also a nickname, Maccabi. Yuda the Maccabi. We don't know exactly. Temperature, 210, a little bit more. We don't know exactly why. Uh, there are a few explanations. So one reason for the Maccabi, if you take just the letters, Mem, Kaf, Bet and Yud is from what we sing every Shabbat. Mi kamocha ba'elim Adonai, Adonai is Yud. So this is one. But this, I don't think this is the, 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 the real reason. Maccabi in Kuf is actually a hammer. So it could be imagined that as a fighter, he got the name Yudah the hammer, like a, a big one. If you spell Maccabi a little bit different, Maccabi is actually to, to lechabot, to turn off a fire. So 
if the bricks were fire, he was turning them off. But one way or another, we have to remember it as the Hezmonians. These were the people. Maccabees, the, the term Maccabee came much, much, much later. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. We are now at 302. That's plenty. So what we want to do now, we want to fight some of them. So this is one. Like that. And I'm going to flatten it in a second. So I'm going to take a spoon, uh, uh, this. I'm going to do this, cut it, and leave it like that. Now, if you see all the oil is on one side, that's because the oven, the stove is not standing straight on the ground. That's the problem. And we put a little bit more. We will add the oil later, like that. We don't even need it because it's a non-stick pan. Ah, for uh, right, right. But we also wanted the flavor yeah. from the oil. The oil is very good. Now you see, I, I, we, I, I would want this to be more uh, coral, more uh, liquidy, because then it would be even more succulent. Remember, the juicier it is, the the, the more liquid, the more um, moisture. Let's call it moisture. The better it is. I'm going to take another uh, this and uh, see if it shape them like that. Okay, like that. And I'll tell you this, I'm going to make an, a small experiment because this mixture is thick enough, I can actually shape them by hand, I think. And then they will be nicer looking. So let's see how it works. Okay, we put it like that. I'm going to take two gloves. that uh, and I'll tell you what since it's all, more than 20 minutes since we put the the zucchini I think it's so uh, we can take a look at them because they were small let's see it does no these are not ready for sure the cake is not ready for sure so we have to wait a little bit longer so what I'm going to do I'm going to wet, wet my hands And better yet, I would even if I use oil, it would be better because we don't want the oil to jump all over us. And I put a little bit like this. And because my hands are wet, you see, I can make those. So you see, this is much better. You see, this is how I want it. This is how they're supposed to be. Now, because I have the gloves, I can actually quetch them. In Yiddish, we say quetch. When you put something, make it flat, is to quetch. Okay, with the hands like this. We want it thin, we want them all to be the same. Okay, and as this go, goes, we have to add the oil and we let them. Now, if we put it in the oven, remember we will add a little bit more uh, oil on, at the bottom. Even if we use apartment paper, I will oil a little bit and definitely brush it on the top too, definitely. Lower the heat and we'll talk about the sauce. So for the sauce, if somebody told me to mix sour cream with mayonnaise, it sounds horrible. Like what mayonnaise and, and the sour cream, but actually it is very, very good. So we want to mix those together. And this is the secret. Remember, people used to eat in this restaurant and, and they couldn't trace that it's a mayonnaise and the sour cream. But actually, it works very, very well together. And obviously, it looks like sour cream again because the mayonnaise is just swallowed there. Okay, this is ready. Mix it and then we want to put the chives. And the chives add some uh, edge, to it, edge to it. That's it. So we add this here. Okay. And we mix it. And that is ready. Maybe you can add even more chai. Even more chai, but we don't have it here. That's okay. So we will. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely, if you see it, 
obviously, Adas is right, as always, this looks a little bit schwach. I would add a little bit more. We don't have, but for your and information. Salt and pepper. And salt and pepper. So this one, I'm going to use this. So a little bit salt, not too much. And the pepper and the salt is this. Again, not too, oh, yeah. oh it smells like pepper. Okay, we have this and this is ready. Let's go and see here. And we will feed them over with this one. Okay, so as I do this and look at those, ah, it's even better. So let's talk a little bit about Hanukkah. You remember that they said that we don't say good yontif on Hanukkah because this is not a major holiday. It's not the, no mention of it, of it anything in the Torah. So when was start, when, when was the first mention of it? So if you, if, you, if you think about the history, this was 160 to 166 BC. Uh, there was a big fight and, uh, and it did the end. You know, when the Holy Temple, the Second Holy Temple was destroyed and we were exiled, uh, people studied to, the, the Mishnah came along by a person named Yehuda Hanasi. Yehuda, again, another Yehuda, Hanasi. Like, Nasi is president these days, but you can think of him as a, a, a big leader or a, something like that, the president, Yehuda the president. And he lived somewhere in the north, and he was, you, if you may, the, the chief editor of the Mishnah. So... Remember, we have the Torah, the five books, and then we have the six books of the Mishnah with over 4,000 of mini chapters in it that, that explain the Torah and discussions about the Torah and all the rules and all the holidays. And after that, at the end of that, came the Talmud in Babylon and Talmud from Jerusalem that was explaining the Mishnah with, with over, let's say, 2,710, if I'm right, uh, pages of the Talmud, and actually there are double pages, so it's 5,422 pages in the Talmud. Now, why do I say all of this? It's because if you look at the Mishnah that was written, obviously, after uh, what happened in the Holy Temple and the, and the, the story with the oil and the Maccabean, Hes Hesmonians, there is no mention of it in the Mishnah at all. At all, zero, no discussions about it, no, no, no stories about it. it. It exists, we know it happened, but they didn't talk about it. And if you look at the time that came later that actually dig, dug deeper into the Mishnah, a page and a quarter about Hanukkah. And in this page and a quarter, they only discussed the miracle that happened with the oil. No mention of the Hesmonians or Maccabees or anything like that. And the reason is, so the first thing is, why? Why did they, 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 they talk about it? And the reason is, at least I think so, and uh, I heard it years ago, is that Yuda Hanasi, the one who assembled the Mishnah, he didn't want another Yuda Maccabi. They didn't want to raise uh, 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 generations of fighters. They had good, they had fine at that time. They lived under rule. But nobody suppressed them that much, and they didn't want to start. They knew what happened when the Holy Temple was destroyed, and so many of us died horribly. So they said, let's not create a big mess. Let's be, let's, nothing. In the Talmud, again, the same line. Only discussion about the, the oil, but not about the fighting, and not the fact that we won this. I'm going to turn on, to switch the, 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 the lapis, like that. So... Now, I'm jumping away, jumping ahead to just before when, when Zionism started. This is where I'm jumping to this era. And with that era, something interesting happened. They rewrote actually the history book in a way that they put a lot of emphasis about the fighting and about it, it was us that were fighting. Especially remember that this area at the beginning of the establishment of Israel, we had kibbutzim, they were not religious at all, and they didn't say something that is a lie. They just put a lot of emphasis on that. And why? If you think about it, this is the, there is a huge resemblance between the Hasmoneans or the Maccabees and to us, making us our country. With, we were under rule, we decided to, have to be independent, we decided to break free, and we did it. We did it then, and now they had to raise generations of people that will go to the army, that will fight 
for the motherland, for our land, and we make sure that we can continue staying in the state of Israel, hopefully forever, at least until the Holy Temple will be built. And this is why they put a lot of emphasis. So me growing up, a lot of the songs about the Maccabim and the power and they were fighting and Yuda was winning and even uh, uh, What does it mean? Who is going to talk about all the powers of God? Every generation, Yakum Hagibol Goel Am, the person, the hero that is going to save us. Any, every generation, we have somebody that's going to fight for us and help us uh, dwell. And this is what happened more and more and more and more. Okay, so these are definitely, let's see, a little bit more. Uh, let me be test. And obviously, we want to do it. Now, I'm going to uh, do a quick check on the cake. Let's see. And the cake. Okay, these are not going, this is not going to be. No way. Yeah, actually, it doesn't have the color. I will add, I will pick up the temperature a little bit here on this That's one. It. So let's do it 400. Actually, we could. If we have, the, if you have the time, if you have the time, then 350 for longer time. If you don't, and especially when it's almost ready, I'm ready raising the temperature. Oh, look at this cake. Look at this cake. Now you see how it's, can you see how does that it's uh, jumping yeah. around, all mm -hmm. around? Mm -hmm. Can you see how it jumps around? So the way to make it and to get it really ready is that there is no shaking anymore, but everything is very, very wet in the center. So I would say another five minutes, maybe it will be ready there. But remember, the oven down is really not a very precise one. Uh, which one is okay? I'll add a little bit more. So let's see what's going on here. These are ready for sure. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to put them here like that. Look, look at this beautiful color. Wow, we want this is great. See now, I'll tell you something about all the sous ganiot that we eat in Israel, and this is the jelly donuts. And as you know, the traditional Israeli donut looks like this, it's big, and it has a, a jelly jam in the center. Me growing up, it was amazing, even though they didn't even put, there were no fruit in that jam. It was a very basic cheap product. However, it was always fresh. Now, when you go to Israel, you have so many types of jelly donuts for Hanukkah that is absolutely incredible. And actually, I saw a review just before this about the most expensive uh, jelly donut in Israel that cost, believe it or not, 100 shekels, which is over $30 for one donut. So what's so special about this donut? So it comes in the, like almost an a, a, a airtight uh, container. It has a gold powder around it, like gold leaf and saffron. And uh, I don't know what was in the inside because I didn't see the full review, but he said it's worth it. I don't know if $30 worth any, any, any donut in the world. So this is how it is. You see how nice? Color is great. We put it here. And uh, maybe you'll taste it first of us. What do you think? Okay. I, will, I will point the picture, come here. Okay, and remember that we say that even if it's not tasty, you have to say that it's good. Remember, you ready? It's hot. You have it? No, it's hot. It's hot? Yeah. It's take hot. a, take a, take a, a do foo on it. If you do foo, let's see. It? Yeah, a little bit, because don't forget, it will make it cold, the, 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 this. Mm. Be honest, if it misses something. Delicious, but it's. It burns my fingers, so I'll ah, put that's it down. Not, that's not important. I put it down, but it's so good. Ah, that's not important. The important thing is taste. Mm -hmm. You like, really like it? Mm -hmm. You'll be honest? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, look, Adas is a very, very big critic mm -hmm. and uh, very tough to, to, to satisfy mm -hmm. her on things like this. It's juicy. How would you describe it? Is it succulent? Mm -hmm. 
It's very crispy on the outside. Yes. Very soft in, on the inside. Yeah. And this dressing is very, very good. Exactly like the Israelis. Hard on the outside, yeah. soft on the inside. Yeah, like a Saba, yeah. Very, sure. very good. It's okay. very good. It's good. So, Adas, you want to check for us the cake and tell us what do you think? So, Adas is going to check for us because I actually have to be honest that I've never made this cake in my life, but yeah. Adas does it regularly. Yeah. So, no, these yeah. definitely need more color. Yeah, but, but, uh, but they're ready. Yeah. Right? Another mm -hmm. two minutes. We take them in two minutes. Whatever we have, we Maybe have. Five. Maybe five minutes, yeah. Mm. And this one, this one is yeah. almost no, ready. It's ready. No, wait, wait, wait. No. If we put on the side, no, a little bit more. A little bit more. So we have to buy another few minutes. Yeah. Adas, maybe tell us a story from childhood about Hanukkah. I'm going to <laughs> something from school. Um, I don't have stories from school, but uh, there is a, a big, uh, like, uh, song con con contest in Israel, the festival, and it was, uh, my parents used to take me every Hanukkah to see the festival. For, for children, right? For the children. Festival, yeah. Festival. Yeah, the first half, uh, like, uh, adults, uh, singers uh, used to perform, and then the, the other half, children from Israel, like very talented children, like many was, <laughs> they used to perform uh, the same songs same that the song. uh, adults, and I used to love it. And they didn't uh, sing it together at the end? At the end, yes. Right, yeah. they used to sing it even together. Yeah, so the, older, the famous older singer sang it first, then the young, and then together it was very, very moving. Mm -hmm. I've never, I was never taken for That's this. That's my Hanukkah memories, and also I used to spend the, the vacation at my grandparents in Haifa, which was always great to see them. What did yeah. you do with your grandfather in Haifa? He also he took me to movies, to the zoo, to, uh, to the beach. Yeah, but not on Hanukkah. On Hanukkah it's cold. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Okay, you know what? Take, off, take out the, the zucchini. Let's see what happens. I mean, okay, so and now I'll tell you this. This cake, once again, I have to say that even if it's, you can eat, it's, it's delicious as it is, even if it's not, even if it's uh, completely raw. Minutes for that, yeah, they're, but they're, they're, yeah, right. But they're right. Like, yeah, you, so you need, you need minutes, yeah. yeah. You see, this is how they look. I am a little bit, let's see if I stick this. Yeah. See, it does come fine. Yeah. So, uh, definitely, but definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely, definitely, if you put if you let it sit even like that and put it in the refrigerator, yeah, uh, it okay. will definitely harden. And, and remember, the softer it is, the more gelatiny, not the, the, like moving and dancing, the, the better it will be, the tastier it will be. You don't want it uh, choking. I hate when things are choking. Okay, so this, you could, maybe you move it a little bit and let's take the cake, cut a piece and see how it goes. <laughs> we had another few minutes, it would be completely perfect. Uh, no, huh? Yeah. Okay. Take it out, let's see. We have it, to it show them. Really, 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 really. So what will happen in reality? You see this cake. It, re it really, it really does need another few minutes. But no, 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 I know, I know. This is the zucchini. No. <laughs> okay. So you see, it's a little bit. But it, it, let's see if I stick. Yes, this is wet. Let's see, it's here. Here, it's ready completely. Yeah, a few see. more minutes will. Another few see. minutes. Yeah. You know what? If, 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 I, I want to ask a question. Anybody has here a special story from childhood about Hanukkah? Raise your hands. Anybody that is, uh, want to tell us a story? No? Okay. Very good. Okay, so I think that, uh, that uh, you know what? Questions and answers, and this may give us some time. Okay? So let's do this. And let us, everyone, anyone has any questions regarding what we have done today? You can, un, you can please unmute. Or type it in the chat and I can read it. Can't you do it, Bob? Get the new one. Two off. Okay. So, what? yes. How, how long, then how long for the uh, la chocolate lava cake? Okay, so the chocolate lava cakes, I think we put it in at eight, so it's almost half an hour inside the, the, the oven, but 
look, put the, put the timer for 25 minutes, then look at the cake. It, it, you know, just touch it. If it's completely not ready, you'll see the center shaking like a gelatin. That means it's completely not ready. Then give it another 10 minutes. You want to see it shaking. You don't want to see it solid. It will be delicious even if it's fully baked all the way through. But if you want it succulent and you want all the lavas to come from the inside, then yes, you have to have it a little bit. Uh, so you want to have it uh, harder on the outside and the center, just the center a little bit moving. I, I think this is what we will have in a few minutes with that. So it's more to look at it, but you cannot really uh, destroy the cake unless you put it and go to work and then go to vacation in Europe and then come <laughs> back and then for sure it's good. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So Any that, other questions? Um, this one, Bob, how long? Do you know how long for the zucchini? All right, so on the, the zucchini, zucchini uh, if you make it in a casserole as opposed to little cupcakes, did you say 50, five, zero minutes? 50, yes, five, zero minutes at uh, uh, 350 degrees. Uh, cover it yeah, better always, and then uh, and just let it be. And this, you're not going to stop eating it because it's really, really very, very good. Now, by the way, uh, the original, original, original recipe calls for I think one teaspoon of the uh, uh, soup powder. That's what they call Tablespoon it. Tablespoon of awesome, uh, yeah, yeah. awesome uh, chicken soup. Chicken soup powder. Yeah. So you can use, put a tablespoon, it, it does add, I, I prefer not to use those things, but you can add a tablespoon of that, or you can use a different one, knorr or uh, anything like this. It's a little bit enhance the flavors. Remember, zucchini doesn't have a lot of flavors regardless. Mm. So uh, this is a very mm -hmm. mild flavor uh, uh, quiche. And, uh, and so how much self-rising flour was in the zucchini? In, uh, in the zucchini, in zucchini you remember? Uh, three fourths of a cup. Three fourths of a cup. Thank you. Very good. Now remember, and this is important. No, a cup and a half. A I'm cup sorry, and a half. I'm confused between all the recipes. Okay. But the, the recipe that we sent is uh, supposed to be precise. But remember, when I did the zucchini, when I grated the zucchini, there was not a lot of juice there. Sometimes you grate the zucchini and there is a lot, a lot of liquid. So you don't want that liquid inside this uh, pie too much because they, you'll have to wait longer until it's, uh, it disappears and evaporates. So you want the zucchini to be relatively dry, but not very, very dry. Um, yeah. Should we look at the cake again? What do you think yes. of us? Yeah, yes. maybe. Yeah. But but, but we're yeah, not these things are quick. Because, uh, uh, no, it's, it's not still? Fun. No, it's not a smart idea to crush. I know, every time we open it, it's a problem. Yeah. You want to use this address. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's so I know, but I want to show everyone. I know, but we don't want to crush. I know, but we want to show. Ah, it's it's I told you, five minutes. Yes. Yeah, it's okay, perfect. so look at the cake. Oh, now, yeah. let's look at the cake. If you see the cake, look how, how tall it became from this a little bit of self rise. If I shake it, wait. Okay, it's not moving. Let's take another uh, milky uh, spoon. Let's see, ah, this is. You I see like how it? Yeah, it does, it, it's shaking. It's shaking in, inside. Okay, so now for the big moment that we were all waiting for, I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut the piece and see what happens in the inside. Okay, you see how soft it is? It's really soft. Oh. Look, this cuts inside like butter. Yeah. Really, like butter. In there. Wow. Like that. Now let me take it out. Let me cut a bigger piece. We have this. Uh, uh, hmm. Take this one. Okay, so I'm going to cut from the other side a little bit bigger piece so it will fit directly here. So I'm going to cut from this side. I'm going to cut this piece. I'm going to cut it this piece like that. And I'm going to take a plate. And now let's see what happens when you take it out. Yeah, you see the lava in here? Can you see yeah. the lava inside? Yeah. Now, here, this is how it looks when you get it. 
like in with vanilla ice cream it's yeah so with the vanilla with, with vanilla ice cream you're killing everyone i mean kind of <laughs> they're going to taste it and this is really and 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 you know it's the the ingredients don't lie clean the lens yeah the ingredients don't lie if you put high-end ingredients good chocolate by the way if you want the best chocolate for the money by far you have to travel to trader joe's they i said it before i'm sure uh, they have a, a 500 grams which is over one pound i think 399 belgium high-end chocolate i use it all the time for anything raw chocolate and of course a basto uh and i think that uh, this uh, kind of uh this puts uh, everything in conclusion right any questions about the cake See how the cake inside, it has this, uh, right, one second. Try to get a better angle. You see how it looks inside? Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. This is really, and it's really, really, this is really, really good. There is no mixtures. Oh. There is no cheap uh, cutters that cut in to make it uh, less, less uh, quality. This is the highest quality that you can get in a cake, uh, yeah. ingredients wise. And also it's very, very, very easy to make it. So when someone calls me and says that I'm on the way, like uh, someone like a friend from Fairlong says I'm on the way, I'll start making it. By the time they come, uh, it's, it will be ready. Yeah. What kind of chocolate was it? I'll so, show you. Dark chocolate. It's a dark chocolate from Trader Joe's. Okay. I'll show you. It worth the travel because this is if you want to eat high quality. That their seventy percent is delicious, and their the regular dark chocolate like is delicious, that. and it looks like that. Okay. Okay. Oh. Plus. Thank okay. you. Yeah, we have that. So, um, first of thank all, you, I want you. to say. Thank you to Adas, because without Adas, obviously, as I always say, nothing would have happened. And she is the one. Uh, and thank you for uh, joining us. And I have to say something. I already ate uh, three of the latkes. You did? Yeah. You know what you said? Wow. <laughs> See? So, oh, so it wasn't a bad idea to have the egg. The egg didn't bother you. No, but to have uh, it's good. Yeah. With... Okay. So, but it's good either way. Yeah. So thank you very much. Happy Hanukkah. Remember never to say young, good yontif on Hanukkah. Uh, and remember that the Hezmonians, this is the word that you have to remember. Hezmonians, these are the people. Uh, Maccabees come from Yuda, the Maccabee. That it was his name, just a, a name. Uh, all the best. Same and happy to Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to you. Thank you, thank you. Happy Hanukkah, thank you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.